need that. Okay. Hey. Hey guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. This is a new one. A new stream. This is actually a birthday stream for me. Because uh, today is my birthday. And I'm, well, I'm doing a stream. <laughs> but we're starting a new build today. Um, don't need that either. Um, today we are starting this guy here. The Italeri. I think it's Italeri. Is that how you pronounce it? Maybe it's Italeri. Um, I don't know. Anyway, the Italeri FA-22 Raptor. This 148 scale model. And um, it has been a long time since I did a Raptor. I've only done one. Well, technically, I did one years ago when they had the YF-22. I guess it was a prototype. I built, them, built one back then, and it was the probably the most boring build I'd ever done on a plane. And uh, I did not enjoy it very much, and I thought, yeah, Raptors suck. I don't like them. That was years ago. Then last year, I built the Hasegawa F-22 Raptor in 48 scale, and I liked it very much. Um, but I had a request to build a Raptor, and so I got this Italian one. And so, here's what we got so far. No, I'm just kidding. I just did a little mock-up to see how this is going to fit. <laughs> nice joke, right? Yeah. So, I just did a little mock-up on this. Figured, see how this is going to kind of fit together in the future when it gets, comes time to actually um, putting these pieces. I anticipate a big panel line right across here as these two go together. I'm anticipating an ugly line there. For the rest of it, it does seem to go together pretty okay. Of course, we have this situation here where you have the nose piece like this, and this kind of is kind of weird, and it's gonna go in like this, and then you're gonna have a couple of uh, couple of pieces that go here. So now that I've taken all the tape off, it wants to fall apart on me. Um, this is going to go sort of like this, sort of, and then this will go on here. And we're going to have a couple of pieces to fill in here. So it's going to be interesting if there's going to be any gaps on these corners. Um, from what I've seen online and other Raptor model kits, probably going to have some fitment issues in here. So I'm kind of anticipating that. Um, I'm not really worried about it. Um, one thing I am still debating, whether I want to actually have this on a, on a stand actually in flight. I'm kind of debating whether to, to do that or not. I gotta turn this down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of debating. And of course, if I'm going to have all the bays closed, then I don't need to paint in here. I don't need to assemble any vessels. That makes life really easy. Um, don't have to paint and assemble any landing gear because the bay doors will be closed. Right? There is that bonus. But, as we all know, they kind of build these model kits with the assumption that your bay doors are open and not closed and you might have a kit that you're lucky enough to have bay doors that are designed to be open and bay doors that are designed to be closed two separate pieces that usually is not the case though and so when you try and make a make them closed you wind up with a lot of fitment issues and big gaps to fill in or they're actually too big to fit in the holes and you wind up having to do a lot of trimming it's a pain in the ass. So I don't know. I think I'll just decide when I kind of get to this. We've got to get this thing pretty much assembled before I make that decision. It won't make much difference on my build whether I go, okay, now it's assembled. Oh, now I've got to paint white in here, right? It's, or I go, hey, I'll just do the white now. It just means more masking. It's really the only difference it's going to be. Anyway, that being said, that's these main fuselage parts. This thing's got a fairly decent set of instructions. I've already gone through to mark off the colors, 
nice and easy of things what I need to paint like I usually do and uh, we've got a fairly decent deco sheet uh, as you can see I've already cut one out why is that that is because I have already assembled the cockpit what you didn't show you building the cockpit I didn't show you because it's really simple and I am actually quite disappointed on the level of detail on this thing. So if I can get this to focus in, try this, it might do it. No? There we go. So here's our cockpit. Okay. Extremely low detail on this thing. And the instrument panel is literally, oops, where am I going? It's just a decal. The, the, the thing was just a flat piece of plastic and so you had to put a decal on it there was no other thing um, the buttons are extremely rudimentary the detail on this cockpit is I would say this is the second least detailed cockpit I've ever put together on a 48 scale kit the number one least detailed cockpit was the F, the F, the Harrier. Um, the Harrier was, yeah, the seat could have been made out of two pieces of wood. <laughs> it was just flat and zero detail on the back cushion, zero detail on the bottom cushion. It's literally two square flat pieces. Um, this is the second least detailed cockpit I've ever seen. So, I was looking at the canopy. This thing comes with a clear canopy, which if you look at any pictures of F-22s, you see the F-22 canopy is tinted like a yellow goldenish color. Um, if you haven't seen that before, you've never seen a picture um, of the F-22, Here's a pretty good shot right here, and uh, I think this is the scene I want. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that orangey tint that uh, the canopy has, right? I don't think I have another picture of the Raptor and its golden canopy. Um, I did save a bunch of pictures on this. Um, cockpit details um, so you can see this is you can see the tint on this one it doesn't really look orangey on that picture but you can see that's definitely a tinted canopy it's not just clear um, so anyway so I got to do something so I went and picked up this uh, clear orange and so my plan was I'll take some smoke color. This is smoke. I've used this on a, uh, an RC car body to tint the windows and it worked out really well. As you can see, even the lid is kind of a clear color. You can see my finger through it. Um, so I figured what I'll do is I'll take the clear canopy and I'm going to spray the inside of it with the smoke color and then I'll spray the orange clear on the outside. So it'll be a nice tinted dark orange color. Well, as it turned out, this has been sitting on the shelf for a while. It's got about a third left in it. And when I sprayed it, it kind of went a splattery pattern. It didn't spray smooth because there wasn't enough pressure in the can. So I decided to really give it a good coat. And after a couple of minutes, I noticed it was starting to pool and it wasn't a good, nice coverage. So I got to get rid of it. I got to fix this, right? So I decided I'm going to grab my alcohol, I'm going to pour it in a little container and I'm just going to dunk the canopy right in it and I'll grab my um, Q-tip and I'll just get rid of the paint because, well, alcohol can take the Tamiya paint right off no problem. And it did. It took the dark color right off, exposing the fact that this paint had eaten the plastic and caused a very uneven white film on the inside of the canopy and 
now my canopy is completely ruined. So, what to do? I've got a really awful, shitty looking canopy now. Lesson learned. Don't use PS paint on these plastic model kits. This is for polycarbonate plastic and polycarbonate only. Uh, don't spray a clear piece of plastic for your canopy with a PS paint. Lesson learned. Lesson learned hard. So now I got a canopy that you can't even see through it and it looks like shit. So what I decided to do, um, I took silver paint, sprayed it on top, and then I sprayed the orange over it. And this is my super bright, cartoonish looking canopy. Um, I even tried painting it black on the inside to try and fix it somehow. Uh, to no avail. It is... Yeah. Live and learn. I should have just sprayed the inside with the orange and left it. I should have just done that. Should have just sprayed it with the clear orange and uh, I'd be done. And it would be fine. Um, yeah. I even tried <laughs> doing a little couple of test sprays on my little... Uh, Spitfire here that I use just to for different techniques to see what it would look like if I sprayed it over gunmetal or sprayed it over gray. Um, in the end, I chose silver. Um, yeah. So there's my canopy. This thing is going to look kind of funny when it's all done. On the plus side, the lack of detail on the interior or on the interior on the cockpit. Well, it ain't going to matter much when you can't even see in there. <laughs> that is what it is. Like I said, live and learn. And that concludes what I've been doing. I got to see the symbol. I got to put in there. Um, it's time to actually put it in the fuselage, I guess. Um... Although, you know, do I have to put it in here? I don't really have to now, right? I suppose I could, in theory, display this thing with it open, and then you get to see it. Otherwise, it's just going to be like this. I guess I can take this off. It's, I don't need that anymore. Because it's basically going to look, you know, it goes onto that little canopy surround, and it's going to look like this. And that's kind of the way this thing's going to look, right? It's just going to look, it's going to look like a toy. And, uh, that's just the way it is. Um, so, but I'm going to build it anyway. It's not going to stop me from putting it together and painting it. Um, so anyway, might as well throw the cockpit in here. Um, simple enough. Throw some glue on it. Tighten that good. Throw some glue on it and uh, make her permanent. Done. What I find funny is they show details on the back little back panel here that aren't even really here. And they hey paint these black. You know what? On the actual plane, the whole inside of this thing is black, and they're telling me to paint it gray. So I don't know what's going on with these guys. Um, cockpit, like they wanted you to paint the seat gray. And I'm sorry, the, the pilot's seat is not gray, it's black. Look at any pictures of these things, and that ejection seat is black, not gray. But yet, hey, paint it gray. Yeah, screw you. I'm sorry. I guess I'm a little bit bitter. I'm a little bit upset that I ruined the canopy on this, and that might just plague me this whole time. So anyway, <clears throat> let's see what we got here. So I don't even know what side we're supposed to be looking at, because I played around with this thing and looked at it. 
assemble it to see how well this is going to go together. So let's just take a look here. So I waste my precious Tamiya masking tape. Okay, what side are we dealing with here? This one. Okay, so if we position this like this, this is for, I don't know what, this is going to be for the gun, I think. This side of the plane, yeah. So this is the gun. This is, I don't know what that's for. But they want me to paint this white like you're ever going to see that side of it. I can understand the other painting the inside, this 10B here. So this is kind of interesting because we've got, I should go through this. I'm going to do this right, I'm going to do it right. So this is D. I always like to paint, do both sides. D. Okay, that's the D. Found the D. And these two are just part of, this is C. Of course, there's not too much on this, is there? That's the uh, exhaust and then the tail fins. This is also part of C. This is... Uh, I'm not sure what these two pieces are. It's a ladder. This might be their way of mounting the sidewinders. But I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Next. Interior of the engines and more wings. What tree is this one? This is B. So, that would make this piece number 10. Yes, so I need this piece. We've got one last tree. It's got all the missiles and bombs and everything. And this tree is. Press that row of designation. This is A. A. Just like that. Okay. So that's A. Alright. I don't need A right now. Where's my little I need number 10. It's got this little bit of piping detail in there. And it's just going to go like this. And just fit in that spot there. It just doesn't even line up proper. So that you get some little bit of piping exposed in there. Now, is this supposed to be painted white? That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So it doesn't go like that. They don't have the markings to line this up very precise at all. Like, look at that. That is not very good at all. <clears throat> So, Italy, I don't know, are you trying to be like Ravel? Because that's the kind of bullshit fitment that Ravel does. You know? And you know, this is on a curve. It's on a curve. This, as you can see right here, this is curved. This piece has no curve, it's straight, the way it mounts. I don't know if I can get that on the camera to show you. Um, there's there's no curve to it. So it doesn't, it's just... It's just stupid. 
which means throwing lots of glue on it to get it to stick. Anyway, so this side we want 11A, so that's A, so we do need the A tree right now. Let's find 11 on here. And that's that. Oh, that's the highly, super highly detailed gun. I'm sorry, do I sound sarcastic? If I sound sarcastic, then I'm doing a good job because I'm meaning to sound sarcastic. Here's your gun. Here's the machine gun on our F-22 Raptor. Uh, there you go. Lots of detail. Not. And the way they want this is like this, which makes sense. But it sticks out. Again, doesn't really line up perfectly. So, glue, glue, and more glue. So you're going to see the exposed gun, unless they give me some kind of panel to cover it, that gun's exposed. Which technically, if you watch this plane, there is a little panel that goes boop and opens up and then the gun fires and then it goes boop and closes again. Um, so it's kind of like, well, if I'm going to put that panel on, then there's no point in gluing this on the inside, is there? It's, uh, the detail is moot, is that the correct word? be the correct word. I don't know. Okay. So then we've got, uh, we need the D. We need the D. You can't go without the D. 15 and 16. These two guys. But I will say, you know, Italeri, I used to call him Italieri. I don't know, some kind of a frozen pizza dish. It's not delivery, it's Italieri. <laughs> anyway, as I do my mocking <laughs> Italian pose. <laughs> Brand new blade in my knife. After I was discovering from my last Gundam build that uh, the blade was getting a little bit dull. So now, the tricky part with put when you don't use a new blade on every build, um, you kind of get used to having to put a certain amount of pressure on it to to cut, and so you get used to going, okay, I need to press this hard. I just I press this hard, this hard, and you then you're used to it. And even when it skips, you don't cut yourself, right? Um, and then you go and throw a new blade on there. And the first thing you do is use the same amount of pressure that you would to cut something. Which is way more pressure than you need now. And you wind up gashing yourself pretty good. And that's never a fun time. And, yeah. So these go on here. Like this. I don't like that slot. I might be, might be utilizing some putty in the future. But I don't know right now whether I need to or not. So we'll see. I haven't had any comments yet on my Gundam build. I asked the question. Do you guys like watching the whole process of taking the parts off, this, off of the runners, cleaning them up, and assembling? Or would you rather just watch the assembly? 
and not the whole process? I would like to know because I can edit my videos on YouTube so that they're more about what you actually want to see because then that'll be easier for you guys watching you don't have to skip through so many things um, if you don't really give a crap about how it, the pieces all get cleaned up and my techniques and using my special little razor glass file you know um, 17d 17 that's next so yeah I appreciate I would appreciate some feedback on that um, and when you're leaving the feedback hit the like button and follow me and when you're done that click on the links in the description and go over to my twitch channel and follow me on twitch I would love to have more followers on Twitch. I'd love to build my Twitch channel. After all, I'm streaming live right now on Twitch. And then you get a notification for when I go live. And you could actually log on and watch me live and you can talk to me live and it would appear in this little window right here and uh, you can tell me how stupid I am and and uh, for painting my canopy solid golden yellow <laughs> I tried painting it over the gun just a gunmetal to try and make it darker and it looked like gold it was just it looked like I made it gold it looked horrible. Okay, next. I need 14C. C. Where are we, C? I think that's those two on... Where is that one tree? This one here. 14. Oh, all four of them are number 14. That makes it easy. two for now. I will say these are the F-22 engines are probably amongst the um, more boring ones to assemble because there's not much to them. In comparison you look at the um, I don't know, pick an airplane, F-15. Um, where you've got all that mechanical rods and everything to make that jet expand and go like this and contract, right? Um, all these dudes do is just, they sit there like this and they go, <laughs> they make that sound too. <laughs> Okay, so I think it didn't fit properly. Is it supposed to have that gap? I don't think so. It's supposed to be like this. But these pins don't let it line up proper. Unless it's supposed to have that gap like that. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think it's supposed to have a gap. You see that gap I'm talking about right there? Where my finger is? Hmm? I don't I think it's supposed to be like this. But if I glue it down, it's gonna look like that. I have a picture of their engines. Let me go take a look at these. I 
did, I just so happened to have a picture of their engine. Um, where am I here? Um, where did I go? There I am. Um, this guy here. So, um, yeah, clearly there's not a huge gap. Sure, there's a, a panel line, but that's it. So, that's that. So, there's my answer. <laughs> to do that, although technically it should be closer with this, but will I run into fitment issues if I, say, eliminate these pins so that I can put this closer like it should be? We're going to try it. So I'm going to get rid of these pins. Be careful with my brand new knife blade. Now I shouldn't have a problem just lining this up however I want and gluing it in place. So I'll just put it nice and close there. do that. So, as you can see, that puts this up in the air quite a bit. So I could take a piece of spare sprue, just trim it and kind of just shove it in the back. <laughs> For lack of a better term. just to ensure that this stays where it's supposed to and it stays up and it doesn't come off. Because, well, this is clearly not really designed to fit like that. It's supposed to be fitting flush, but as you can see, it's really not flush at all. They're just sticking up in the air like that. So. We'll see. And of course, I might wind up having to totally scrap that idea. I don't know. I really don't know. But what I can do is take a couple of pieces of sprue. Let's just use this one. That'll work. And let's get an idea of what kind of depth I need. sort of straight and this just so I can mark it what kind of height do I need around there should work okay So there's the length I need. So now I need to cut this one flat. And get it around the same length. It doesn't have to be exact. There we go. Okay. So here's my two little pieces. There's my spare. I'll just put that there. 
tweezers work. I got myself a new set of tweezers. Uh, I think it's going to help me out a lot. So normally I got these, right? These are kind of cool and they work to the job. They're, they're not bad. But I find when I want to actually hold something really small, these kind of get in the way. And I can accidentally release just a hair and the piece, I've dropped the piece. Well, these are the exact opposite of tweezers. You squeeze them to open them, and they hold on to things all by themselves. And uh, they, they hold tight. Like, ow, that, that hurts, right? They hold tight. I got a little piece of clear plastic here I tested to see. If I hold on to that clear plastic, will it leave grooves? And it doesn't. So even though there's some teeth in there, and they do hold nice and firm, um, they are, they're not, they don't hold too tight. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I'm going to take some glue and throw it in there. And then, let's grab one of these. And I'll take some glue and put it on top. And I'll just kind of slide it in there until I get some resistance. There we go. Where I know it's touching something. And that's good enough for me. Glue in there. Doesn't have to be pretty or anything. And that's good enough for me. So now it's just going to add that, make it so that it doesn't accidentally, it's not relying on the glue holding it right on a little pin there. So you can see, you can see right down in there now, got those two little pegs, right? So good enough. I think that'll hold. That should be. Plenty to hold them, and uh, yeah, good enough. Okay, so we can move on to the next page. Let's flip this over. Next page, they are telling me to cut holes in the bottom part of the fuselage. So. Now we're working on the bottom, so we can put this aside for now. Let's grab, grab the bottom. And the first thing they want me to do, they're showing me the knife blade for these. So what's the story? Are they wanting me to make sure these are cleanly cut out? Because they actually look pretty cleanly cut out. I don't see any extra flashing there. Maybe in that little corner. Could use a little bit of a trim. There's a tiny little bit of flashing that it could use just a little bit of cleanup. I don't know if I got this on camera or not. No, I apparently don't. But I need to see it, so I need to hold it close to my face. So I'm sorry if I can't get this part on camera. I need to see what I'm doing here. in the long run, well, once I put the front on, how much of this is going to be seen? You know? Because in a sense, this is the back of the intake, if there's a front and a back of the intake in reality. Um, so, I 
I doubt that there is much to be seen here. There's no definitive lines per se. Just kind of making them up as I go along here. So, good enough, I guess. If I need to trim more at a later date, then that's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so, I've got some little fins to put in here. Uh, off of the A tree. The A tree is in here. I need one of four, five, six, and seven. Look like all missile stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. One out of three, and then forty two, ninety eight, forty three, and eight, eleven. One out two, one out seven. Um, Yeah. Are we sure it's A? Hmm. Or is there an A tree that I've missed? That's B. That's C. And this is D. Hmm. I don't think I've got an extra tree sitting around here somewhere. Nope. Nope. Let's refer to the manual. They usually show your sprues and everything. So let's see here. This is A. I'm looking for 104, 5, and 6, and 7. And I don't even see them on here. There's 107. But what am I looking for? 104, 105, 106, and 107. But <clears throat> literally, okay, so I found 106 and 107. Now I know what I'm looking for. There's 106. It's pretty big. Same with 107. There's 107. Okay. But what about the other two? Oh, they're hiding. They're hiding. I found them. I found them. Okay, so 107, 106. I'm just a little bit, you know, this is why I need my glasses. It's also why I need to change my glasses all the time. Because my vision sucks. 105. 105. I was actually looking for much smaller pieces. <laughs> 
part of my problem. It's one of five. business. 104. So let's put these in 105, 6, 7. Six. And 107. Okay. So, how do these go? We take 104, and these going to go. Do, do, do. This. Just kind of lines up like that, and you just kind of hope for the best that you get it vertical. Okay. Next, so we go. We are going in order, right? Four, four, and that one is five. Four, five, seven, six. That's how we're going. So five. It's going to go this way. Seven. And then six. So what I'm going to do is temporarily put the two canopies together. Canopies? I meant fuselages. The upper and lower. So that they can fit into these little slots the way they're supposed to. Um, this is going to go this. that I can make sure they stay vertical upright and whatever and like they're supposed to.
look okay. I keep freaking knocking it. This one is ready to fall apart. delicate. Not a very good design for assembling these. It's really kind of shitty actually. Because they should have had me put the engines on there first and line these up and seal it all in. Because now that I've done these things on, I've got to put those things in there, which means I'm going to have to trim off these little knobs now. And it's, well, it's really stupid. I might as well just pull them right out of there, because I know I'm going to knock them off. I already know that. Plus, I've got to trim out this bit of imperfection. What do they call this thing? I can't remember now something to do with the molding, with the casting. Casting pin or something like that? I can't remember. So there's another two right here. And there's one there, 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 and there. They're all over the place on the inside of this thing. Okay, so I seem to have gotten away with trimming that, those pins away without disturbing my little fins. Since I got this accessible right here, I might as well. There's the engine. So what I'm going to do is, because once I've got this assembled, there's no way I'm going to be able to get in there with my paint to paint the engines without just using a, an ugly brushing method. So I'm going to paint those right now. I'm going to hit them with the gunmetal. real quick here. Gun metal should be here. I'll do light gun metal. I like to use the light gun metal on the inside, especially because it's dark in there and it's hard to see. to do, if I really wanted to show off the detail on that, um, I could take my black, once that dries, I could take my black panel and accent and just um, go in there with it and kind of go to town to show all the different details. I'm not really concerned about that right now because once this thing is together, the openings for the jets are really kind of narrow and you, you don't really see them. Um, so it's kind of, you know, adding detail for no reason. So we have these guys again. 
and we're going to try and fit them in there without disturbing everything. Like this. And just glue them in place like that. A little bit of a rough edge. I'll just get rid of just like a little bit of flashing. Admittedly, I'm used to the Tamiya kits and the Bandai kits that don't have any extra, any flashing to clean up. So I'm almost a little bit surprised when, oh hey, I gotta clean that off. This one's really on a harsh angle to get it to sit in that spot. Wow. Terrible. Now, granted, I don't know if I'm really doing this right. I'm just doing this kind of what I feel it should look like. Because it didn't seem right having those big gaps and that just might be this particular kit that is doing that I could take a look at my Hasegawa and see because I don't remember having such an issue with that okay so I'm going to do the same little treatment on this side uh, where'd my belt go We'll do the same thing here. Give myself an eyeball of the height I need. So it looks like I'm gonna have to trim this little piece off. And then there's that. And where'd you go? There you are. around there we go and we'll do a similar treatment on this one there that maybe help. There we go. So same treatment on this one, just put those little posts. It's not even straight, it doesn't even really matter. It's just a little extra something so that it doesn't just go boink and fall over. It's really the only thing I wanted to do. So then we have this guy, and he's got to go way back here. 
and it's got nothing to support him at all. He just magically stays upright. I'm beginning to understand why people said the Hasegawa kit was the best F-22 in a 172 scale. Because this guy isn't sitting level at all. He just falls down on his face. But I want him to stay up. So, I need to put something under the front edge. Where'd that piece go flying off to? <laughs> Doesn't have to be another a big piece, just a little piece. That's all I need. Something that's roughly the same thickness as that. doing a very good job here. That might do the job. Do it. A little too much. So let's just shave it down. Then I'll do it. Okay. So just a little trim now. Just to. I don't want it too much. This is something that's going to add a little. Just add a little to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So. The whole purpose is I'm going to just glue it onto the tip here so that this thing will st sit um, not like that. And just glue it there. Good enough. Just a little something. Just a little something. So that instead of it sitting like this, now it'll sit straight. It sits level. It's a little too much, but that's okay. I can slide it around. Took it a little too much off, I think. Oh no. This thing lined up in there. I think that's pretty good. Maybe just a little more. Yeah, I think we got a winning spot. So, fill in there. Actually, glue this one right there too. And there we go. Now we've got engines that are going to sit kind of more upright instead of sitting on their face. Now, admittedly, I could have done a little better on that. 
and I think I am going to change that. I'm going to move this up more. So I get a better there we go. I think that's about perfect angle right there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of thin set just to make sure. Sometimes the, the thicker glue is, you know, they say it's a little stronger. I find when you move it around a little bit too much, when, as it's starting to dry, it becomes useless as glue. <laughs> okay, so that was a lot just to get those on there. So now I've got the bays for the weapons and the um, landing gear. But those I need to paint before I put them on there because there's no way I'm going to be getting in on all the angles afterwards. So, let's get my things ready here. So that's these, these guys here. Well, like I said, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to have the landing gear base and the weapon base open or closed. If I do them closed, then I'll be putting this on a little stand and have it displayed as it fits in a flight. But like I said, I need to determine whether I'm actually going to be doing that. I got to look at take the actual parts off of the sprues and see how they fit. If it's a terrible fit, then I'm not going to do that. If it's a terrible fit, then um, I'll just display them open like I would with all my other kits. I think the last one I did with weapon bays closed, or not weapon bays, but landing gear. I think the last one I did was uh, when I re revisited uh, Mavericks F-14. I did that one with the doors closed and the landing gear up. And I'm pretty sure I displayed how these model kits are almost 100% designed to have the landing gear down. Ironically enough, I seem to remember when I was a kid, like uh, going back 35 years, um, airplane kits seem to be designed to be displayed with the landing gear either way. It didn't matter, it was all up to you. Um, so, once again, uh, I'm just lining up there and it doesn't line up at all on the bottom. Unless I got it backwards. Am I doing the wrong side? Is there left and right? There's left and right. So there we go. Okay. That one lines up nice. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. So again, if I just left if I left this and just glued it in, and now I got a paint in there, um, this I just can't get in there at certain angles with the with the spray can. So I'm gonna paint these as they are right now but I do want to get my little things here I need four where's my fourth one so I don't have four out okay so let's do that Even if I'm not using these to actually hold on to them, it's kind of nice to have them because then the parts don't blow away on you. There's nothing to grab on on this one. Okay. 
So, that's when you resort to tape. Fold it over, put it on my little thing here. And then, just do that. And now they're stuck to the table. And I need flat white. Usually do two coats, so I'll let that dry for a minute. Turn my fan on. Now let's take a look at these. These are the intakes on the front, number 24 and 25A. That's these guys here. This is where I'm guessing is going to be one of the bigger fitment problems on how it looks when it's actually assembled. Just, I'm solely going on what I've read when I was first looking at doing a Raptor build about a year ago. Um, well, it's actually been longer than that now, I guess maybe a year and a half. It was before I started streaming and before I was on YouTube. Um, um, so I looked online for F-22 Raptor model, blah, 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 which was the best one. My local hobby store had none, none, and I wanted to build one that was nice because um, just going back on the original one I had built years ago, the YF-22, um, even the paint scheme on it was boring. Um, Anyway, seeing that people were online were saying the Hasegawa kit was probably the nicest kit out there. Um, if, if it wasn't one of the most more expensive ones, but it was the nicer, nicer ones. Um, so that being said, the Hasegawa kit did fit together quite nicely. I will say the weapon base and all the arms and everything and the linkages, the detail on it makes it a little bit fragile to work with. Um, but it was otherwise not too bad. So if we have this like this, we want this. What do we think of this? This? Inside? What the heck? <laughs> okay. That is weird. Ow! Stab myself. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you weird. So these go like that. And um, they want them painted white. So I guess I'm painting them white. I will hold them by a little tiny corner back here where you're probably not going to see it. And uh, even if you do, I can touch it up with a brush and won't be. It'll be inconsequential. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try something totally different. The same thing I did on the canopy. I used the tape, but what I did is I kind of just went doink. 
I made a W. You know, I put it on the back. Anywhere I feel like. And now I've got a little tab that my alligator clip can grab onto. So, second coat on these other pieces. It might be a little ironic if I wind up not using these at all. But that's okay. spray painted this run on the wrong side so I'll let that dry <laughs> I'll let that dry maybe I should call it a day <laughs> this plane is um, it's challenging me and I'm not even doing anything custom on it yet and it's challenging me Once you got those on and these in, the next step is to, they want me to cut the tip off the nose. <laughs> cut the tip off the nose. Where's the other half of my nose? cut the tip off. You can see kind of where they um, are telling me that this is where it should be cut. And then I guess because they're going to want me to put a little rod in the end, but I'm going to say no. I don't see pictures of the Raptor with the big antenna rod sticking out the front. Yeah, they, they say here, alternative. But they do have a couple of pieces they want me to put here. And here. 31 and 32A. Go to the A tree. I guess that's these triangular guys. Yes. I know I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like button. It helps with the algorithms, it helps me get some more views. And while you're at it, why not subscribe? And head over to my Twitch and subscribe to me there. Head over to my Instagram, subscribe to me there. I put links in the, in the description box below, right down there, you can see. I would really appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. So, although these are going in the top here, they're not really anywhere to put. So, i got to figure out how this lines up. 
really leaving it a little bit ambiguous on how this goes in. And this again leads to the whole um, how does this fit together nicely? Because it really doesn't. It would be nice if there were some guiding lines to to have this go in there. And it just sits like that. And once again, you're gonna hope it all fits together properly. There's not even any little notch for this little tab. You're just you're literally guessing at where this lines up. You're literally guessing. And yeah, I don't like it because they want it. They don't give you a progression. Am I going from here to here? Am I going from here down and then here? If I do it like this, at least the two cones are glued together the way they're supposed to be. And then I can slide them in there and fit them. I think so. Let's take a look at these now. This guy needs to be painted on the proper side. So let's put a coat on him on the proper side. second coat on the other one. Okay. Let's put this here out of my way for a sec. Let's glue this. Let's glue this. Glue this. My chat's really really chatty today. Not. I guess it's kind of indicative to the life of a modeler, right? You don't really model with your friends. You don't really... It's all kind of alone time. Okay. Our pieces are together. Let's do that just in case I got any seepage. anymore. I still want it on there just because just well just because. Just so I'm confident when I put it down it's not going to fall apart. And I can add some glue on there afterwards anyway. So there you go. I'll put these aside and I don't want to drop them. It's not ready for his second coat. These are done. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these in and I'm going to call it a day. And that will be the end of part one of our Raptor build. All right. That's, uh, I think, that's going to be good enough for one day, I think. While I'm doing this, I want to thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. You guys who, you know, more subscribers I've gotten on YouTube, I really appreciate it. You know, thank you guys so much. on this side but not on the other so let's refer back to our instructions it looks like these little grooves go down but is there there's definitely going to be a left and a right I just don't know which is which so let's see does this fit like this does. Does it fit like this? It does. <laughs> so it fits either way. And of course there's difference in the molding in the, on the inside. But for the weapon mounting the two sides are the same. They, the two sides are the same, front and back. And I don't know which way. I think this wiring that's here is supposed to be going towards the front. So that's how I'm going to do these which would mean this goes on this side. So let's see how this lines up. I know these line up on there. So about where I want to put my glue on the top here. I guess I'll just run a bead across here. And that should do it. And then, Just in case, I didn't get good contact with that. And that should be fine. And that's how it's looking there. Okay, so we'll do the same with this one, and then we're going to call her done for the day anyway. if I decide to have the weapon base closed well then this is all for naught <laughs> right right okay so that's it so weapon base the weapon bays are sealed up and same with the rear landing gear and that's going to be it and call that it for the day. There's kind of the weapon weapons, the engines, what they're going to kind of start to look like. Um, yeah. So we're going to leave that there, and that'll be it for today, guys. So once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. Okay, you guys are great. You're awesome. 
Um, thank you for the support. It really means a lot. Um, once again, do my plug. This is what, the third time now? Follow me on Twitch. Come on, follow me. <laughs> Go on my Twitch and follow me there, please. I'm begging you. No. Um, it just it'd be, it would help me out. I want to grow my Twitch channel. I would really love to. And then, you know, the more I, more followers I have on Twitch, the more people might actually watch, and the more people I actually get to talk to. Um, this, you know, sitting here talking to myself the whole time is meh. <laughs> anyway, it's it's really not that bad. If you don't want to follow me on Twitch, I don't care. Well, I do, but I don't. It's not a it's not, whatever. Anyway, we're calling you today. And uh, we're done, and um, at least for today. And uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for coming out. And subscribe and like. Hit that like button. That really helps out a lot. And um, yeah, thanks again, guys. So we're going to see you all in the next one.